In this video, we're going to talk just a little bit about R squared type measures and what they are. I'm going to introduce two of them. These are the very simple ones, so they're easy to explain and think about. And then I'm going to, on the website, link to a UCLA um, statistics department website that gives a, a whole bunch of different R squared type measures with their explanations. I think it also um, might show how to calculate them in, in different softwares and so on. But so I'll introduce the idea here and then I'll refer you to some sources where you can read more about them if you want. So <clears throat> logistic regression has many competing R squared type measures. Um, none of them have this, the same nice interpretation that R squared does in linear regression. If you remember there, there's the R squared that tells us the percentage of variability in the outcome that's explained by our model. Okay, so none of these R squared type measures have that interpretation. Um, there's not one that's universally accepted as being the best. And you'll notice that in R and base R, when you fit a logistic regression model, it doesn't return any R squared. And I, I believe the decision there was, since there's not one that people really agree on is this is the R squared we should be looking at, they've chosen not to return any. There are some packages that I'll show you that allow you to get a bunch of the different R squared type measures. So <coughs> pseudo R squared, I'm going to talk about this one because it's analogous to the R squared in a multiple linear regression. So this is 1 minus the residual deviance divided by the null deviance. And if you remember in multiple linear regression, the R squared was 1 minus the sum of squared error over the sum of squared total. And so the residual deviance, we can think of as sort of being the unexplained, right? Unexplained by our model deviance from error. The null deviance is the total um, error. So if we look at this, the residual deviance divided by null deviance, that's giving us the percentage of deviance that's not explained by the model. One minus that, the percentage of deviance that is explained by the model. <coughs> okay, but deviance doesn't have the same interpretation as um, R squared does in linear regression where we'd say the variability and why that's explained by our model. But it's um, analogous to it. So it's getting at the same concept but using the deviances rather than the um, sum of squared errors. Then one other one I want to talk about, and again, it's just, just because it's simple to explain. You can look at the other ones. So all these measures of R squared in some way compare the observed y value, right? either the outcome happened or it didn't, to the estimated probability of the outcome. Right? The probability is that uh, the outcome is going to happen based on our model. So they all compare these two in some way. Right? And if you look at that source I'm going to refer you to, you'll see the different ways that uh, these can be compared. The way the count r squared works Again, I'm explaining this because it's a, a simple one to think about. Is you come up with some rule of saying if there's a greater than 50% chance of the event happening based on our model, we'll say we think the event's going to happen. If there's a less than 50% chance of the event happening based on our model's prediction, we'll say we don't think it's going to happen. And then the count is looking at the number of times we get it correct or the number of times our model gets it correct, divided by the total number. So looking at this, for example, using just these six observations that I put there, for the first person, the outcome happened, and our model says there's an 82% chance that we think it's going to happen, so we'll round that up to we think it's going to happen. And there, our model would get it correct. For person number two, our model predicts 69% chance of the outcome happening. So let's say we think it's going to happen, we've got it correct. For person three, our model says we think there's a 21% chance of the outcome happening for them. So since it's less than 50, we don't think it's going to happen, but it did happen. We got it wrong. For this person, the outcome didn't happen. Our model says 10% chance of it happening. So we'll round it down to we don't think it's going to happen, we got it right. 
it didn't happen. 63% chance of it happening based on our model. We think it's going to happen. We got it wrong. Didn't happen. Our model says we don't think it's going to happen. Got it right. So here, in this kind of quick made up example, we got it right four out of six times, or 67%. So that's what the count R squared is. There's um, bias adjusted count R squared, or um, I don't remember the exact word for it, but essentially what it is is trying to adjust for, you can imagine if you just randomly guessed, you're going to get it correct a number of times, right? Like uh, if I just guess for everyone, the outcome is going to happen. I'm going to get it right for the number of times it actually happened in the data set. So it tries to correct for how often would you get it right by chance. Okay, but so these are the ideas of some of the R squared type measures. You can take a look at the source I refer you to, as well as take a look at some of the stuff we're going to do in R to get a bunch of these R squared type measures. Stick around, guys. There's more to see, and please stay safe.